Um, it's, it is the noon hour, so I'm going to go ahead and get us started. I actually was on a call, so I know I have a few people who might be jumping on here um, as we start the, the day. Um, I want to thank you all for joining us for one of our virtual Earthwise coffee hours. Um, for anyone on the call not familiar with Earthwise, Earthwise is our Marion County Green Business Sustainability Network. Um, we are about 100, sorry, about 200 now, um, businesses strong, which actually have almost 350 various sites across Marion County. Um, Earthwise is a no cost program to businesses. Um, I always tell people, please use me as a resource. Um, my job is to make your guys' jobs much easier in um, your sustainability journey. We do everything from workshops like this to networking events, to audits, trash audits, food audits. Um, We're currently working on some grant programs and of course our certification program in the network. Um, how this came about is I like to do Earthwise Coffee Hours on topics that I get a lot of um, feedback from our network themselves. And I lovingly say as March hit with um, most of our businesses, um, either working from home, changing hours, going on furlough, um, as people started coming back, uh, one of the questions they had was how can we look at um, making sure when we're not just cleaning but doing disinfecting um, are there ways that we can do large surface areas especially if we're doing them multiple times um, the other concern that i had from folks was that um, a lot of people had the backpack sprayers and uh, they were using them maybe you know at the end of every day or you know once or twice a week and now they were finding themselves um, having to use a backpack sprayer um, often several times a day um, for disinfecting purposes. And what that felt like was that it was pro problematic because no matter how ergonomically designed the backpack sprayers are, if you're doing it several times a day, that does put wear and tear on the human uh, body and people wanted to be really cognizant of that. So they were trying to say, are there smaller units that wouldn't be on backpacks? Um, the next question I had was, as there were people were looking at units, um, people were kind of looking at durability and some uh, sanitation units that they were looking at had a lot of plastic parts and they were very concerned about um, would that last if you were having to use it multiple times a day, um, large surface areas. Um, so that was another question. And then the last question we had gotten was, um, there are questions about um, a lot of our places use non-toxic cleaners whenever possible. Um, and they were looking at lower toxicity cleaners that also um, can be antimicrobial and stop the spread of COVIDs, not just COVID-19 in general, but COVID-2, SARS, flu viruses, things like that. So on the screen you guys will see, and this will be um, when this is available online to rewatch the webinar, um, you see AmericanChemistry.com, Nova, Novell Corona's Fighting Products list. That is the list that um, is through the EPA. So these are the products that the EPA has reviewed that says that these, um, these items, these cleaning items actually do what they say they do. And then they also will um, show you the side effects, if any, or um, irritant hazard warning labels. So if you're not sure what you guys are actually using as a disinfectant right now, 
um, number one, you really need it to be antimicrobial, um, but I would look at this list or I would take this list to your janitorial supplies or your cleaning or your maintenance staff and um, just check out the products that you guys have. Um, a little plus note is if you go to this same website and you're curious about home products and antimicrobial and how that would work for cleaning and disinfecting the home, you can also get to the home cleaners list off of that page. Um, so with that, I am going to turn kind of the, the start of the conversation over to um, our guest from Germfogger. Um, they're gonna give you a little bit background, but this is a Portland company that I actually learned about a little from um, one of our uh, brewery distilleries here in Marion County. Um, these guys started off helping our breweries and distilleries doing deep cleaning and sanitation and have branched out to um, the sanitation business um, and disinfecting business kind of in general. So um, I am gonna turn this over to Mark and Thad at Germfogger. Thank you, Rachel. Great introduction. Yeah, well done, thanks so much. Um, uh, Thad's the president and CEO of Germfogger and the parent company, uh, Portland Kettle Works. Uh, I wanted him to uh, address the history of it and stuff, and we are going to do a demo of the unit itself, but uh, he can tell you how it started uh, because uh, it didn't exist a year ago. Yeah. Okay, I'll pull the screen. Yeah. Okay, so uh, yeah, quick introduction to our company. Portland Kettle Works started in 2011. We're obviously located in Portland, the name says it all. Uh, we, our business has essentially been in the, in the craft beverage manufacturing for craft beverages, uh, tanks and process equipment. So essentially anything you can think, the biggest one that comes to mind is obviously brewery and it's the, it's the main share of what our business is. So we've been for the last 10 years developing and building um, craft brewery systems worldwide. We've got, we've got breweries in Europe, Asia, South America, Central America, all over the United States and Canada. Um, we have been doing really well in the business. Of course, COVID hit around February and it really gave us our first opportunity to start thinking about expanding our product line. We had been thinking about other products that we wanted to expand into, but COVID changed our mind on that very rapidly. And so we decided to bring to market as rapidly as we possibly could a uh, an anti-infectious disease control unit that has uh, it performs exactly to CDC standards. We used our typical the same same methodology we use when we go into any any business. Uh, the first thing we do is we do a lot of research with customers that are actually using the machines. So we went out to some fairly large janitorial firms, discussed with them what they're using, what they particularly what they don't like about the pieces of equipment that they have because that's what we engineer away from any negative comments that we get repeatedly we just engineer that out of our product and we wind up we find that 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 process of engineering leads us to a very robust and generally highly accepted product on the mar in the marketplace um, we went through about an eight to nine week really literally seven day per week program of spinning up germ fogger right from whiteboard here's the idea pulled our entire engineering marketing sales uh, myself everybody in the company really together production together to, to come up with the machine that we have brought to market which is the germ fogger it's it, at the time that we brought it out completely unique uh, no one had anything like it. There's some similar stuff out there now. I still say there's nothing that really competes with what, with what our machine does. It's made in Portland. It's an American made product. Um, you, know, you know, made in USA, all you guys out there that are 50 years and older like me know that made in USA meant, used to mean something and it died and went away maybe 15 years ago. Um, we lost that battle. We offshored everything to China it's coming back and it does mean something. When we show our unit to people, they get it immediately. That's the quality, that's the kind of workmanship that, that they like to see in a product. I think people are generally becoming pretty upset with the, with the expensive 
priced but very cheap, cheaply made product that doesn't last. And so we make product the way we would want it to be if it was a tool for ourselves. And that's that seems to be a, a, a good place, a good niche for us in the market. With that, Mark has to sell at a slightly higher uh, price point, but you don't get a Mercedes for the cost of a Kia. It just doesn't work that way. <laughs> yeah, it's all metal construction. It's the only one that's like that. It's the only one that's capable of two-man operation, and it's the only one that is serviceable. So a lot of the plastic ones, if something goes wrong, you throw it away, or if you have multiple, you're cannibalizing one to fix another. Right. Um, so we started Germ Fogger, new business. It's under Portland Kettle Works. We used uh, a lot of the technology or the concepts that we had in-house, just repurposed them to the germ fogger product. Every tank that we've built, and we built literally almost 5,000 tanks at this point for the brewery, beverage, pharmaceutical, uh, kombucha, wine, industries, you name it. If, if, if a beverage goes in it, we've probably built a tank for it at one time or another. Um, every one of those tanks has to be sanitary. And when I say sanitary, I mean like hermetically sanitary, and they have to be cleanable in in position so a lot of the systems that we put into tanks we can do varying degrees of things but the standard system is basically being able to touch every 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 single bit of the tank 100 percent coating the tank with a sanitizer when it's time to clean them um, if you don't do that uh, for instance in the beverage in the beer market which is, like I said, is one of our bigger ones, you can have contamination get into the tank and the result is you get off flavors in the beer. The beer will, won't taste good. Um, you've probably drank that beer at one time or another not knowing it, just thought to yourself, hmm, that's not really a beer I like. Well, that can be from sanitation issues, not, not from our tanks, but someone else's. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, as I said, in about eight weeks, we spun Germ Fogger up, put a website together, uh, brought the product to market, had some, you know, had some wonderful success there uh, in, in large airports. Uh, Johns Hopkins University is a client of ours. Uh, many schools were marketing very heavily and aggressively, into, especially in the school department. Uh, Ride Connect here in Portland is one of our clients. Um, Colorado Convention Center. Here at Colorado Convention Center, we got a bunch of them. But anyway, that we're pushing it out to market. We're I like. I feel like a little bit like a surfer, you know, when you're waiting for the good wave to come. The wave looks like it's coming and the wave keeps dying out before, <laughs> before it gets to us. And that has a lot to do with the economic conditions, you know, opening the economy. When there was a lot of momentum in June for the economy to open, our sales blew up. We were doing fantastically. We're still doing fine, but when the economy shut down again, we see a big dip in our sales. So as it we're waiting and we're observing what's going on with economic conditions and we're building a little bit for inventory right now, which is nice. So we can actually be ready when, when the opportunity comes again to sell, sell a lot of units fast. Yeah. Our lead time currently, I'm quoting two weeks, but it's really a week. So yeah, people yeah, want it when we, out. yeah. Um, so the details on the system itself, uh, it is a antimicrobial remediation spraying unit. Um, it's a lot of words, big words. Essentially, we don't dedicate our equipment to any single chemical. The only thing we would say that you don't want to put through it is a flammable agent. Uh, if the micron, the size of the droplets that come out of the application wands for a piece of equipment are 40, average about 40 micron. Uh, what that means is they aren't really visible to the human eye as an individual droplet, but they go onto a surface and they create a really super thin film. Literally, when you spray, you can't see that you wet the surface. If you do it on a piece of glass, you can see, but when you run your fingers across it, you can then actually see that the surface has been wetted, which is exactly what the CDC is asking to do. 100% wetting of the surface for, a, for the amount of time that the remediation agent, that's the chemical, needs to get a, that 99.99% kill of any infectious disease organism that would be on the surface. We call that a hold time and uh, hospitals use some really toxic stuff that can be like 30 second hold times. What we're averagely seeing, in average we're seeing five, 10, I think the most about 15 minutes of hold time that you leave it on the surface. 
Right. And then it evaporates after that. So the way our machine works is that you shouldn't have to wipe it down. You spray it, you walk away, let it do its yeah. job, and then it evaporates and you're good to go. Yeah, the idea is at like the, if you're using foggers of some sort, you know, backpacks or whatever, the idea being that, that you get that very thin film put down and then there is no wiping. It just it does its thing and it evaporates and you're left with a clean, clean uh, non-residue, no residue remaining on the surface. Again, that's a chemical thing, but it also helps that it's a very thin layer. Um, no residue on the surface and you've killed all the bacteria. Um, ergonomically, I will speak a little bit about our machine. The one that, okay, so we have three product offerings. Two are about to come to market. The first one is the larger germ fogger. It, which we'll show you. Yeah, which we're gonna show you, we'll demo it for you. It runs off two hoses. The application gun maybe weighs, I don't know, maybe a pound. If that. Yeah, it's very light, aluminum and brass. Uh, the whole system's aluminum, brass, and stainless steel. So there's some rubber in there for hoses and so forth, but extremely robust. As Mark said, user serviceable. We offer factory direct support. So anybody that gets a hold of a germ fogger and needs help calls a factory and we, we if, if whatever problem they're having, we get parts out to them if they're having, we don't have very many problems, but we, we envision this as the same as the brewing industry. We were factory direct support and that have been in that business. We just FedEx parts out. So you'll have what you need the next day. Everything's on hand here at the factory in Portland. And Marion County being so close, I'd drive them down to you guys. Yeah, yeah, we can make it happen. Um, so ergonomically, you got a really light wand. The, the second and third products that we're coming out with are a backpack. Uh, a lot of backpack sprayers hold a lot of liquid and their so forth and so on. We are going to, our backpack will come in at under 25 pounds filled with, uh, with agent. It is a soft backpack, not a hard backpack. It's designed so that the center of gravity of the battery and the liquid that's in it is very low. It has a waist belt. So you're actually carrying the, the weight on your belt and then using shoulder straps just to keep it tight up against your back. Again, a lot of the feedback we got from our contractors, because contractors are usually the people who use this stuff hardest, was that you know they're sending people into offices with bulky black backpack sprayers. They turn around, they knock the attorney's picture of their kids off the wall, <laughs> and they go, "Oh no!" And they turn around and then knock the computer monitor off the desk, and so you know it's like three stooges. So our backpack sprayer is very tight to the back. It's designed to be. Mil sort of military-esque grade. The company that we're using to manufacture the backpacks is in Montana. Um, we are keeping them super tight to the body. The idea being that it's sort of like you're just doing your thing, you know, and, and whatever you do, that backpack is doing with you, and you have very limited possibility of making a problem like what I just described happen. Um, it's going to run with the same application wand. So what you're actually spraying with is only this very lightweight gun that you can, you just, it's a trigger pull spray what you're spraying. When you stop, it stops. Uh, the third product offering that we're coming out with is very similar to the backpack, but has a different application. Um, it is really designed primarily for school environments, but I think it'll wind up in a lot of different places. Uh, the idea behind that is, and what we see coming down the pike here, is that most the teachers are going to be expected to disinfect their classrooms between classes. They're going to get a five-minute break where they've got to disinfect and then have the next set of kids come in. Uh, so we are making something akin to a shoulder strap bag. Right now we're kind of calling it a purse, but it's basically very fast. Put it on, lightweight. In five minutes, you can disinfect the entire classroom. It runs off a battery. You don't even need to turn it off. Just hang it back on its hook. Next time the class leaves, do the same thing. Uh, hold enough liquid for a day, probably hold enough battery charge for an entire week. We're using high-grade lithium-ion batteries in these that are rechargeable. Uh, they come out of the solar industry. So everything we do is totally top-notch. There's no repurposed motorcycle batteries, no jank things that are like, you know, something that somebody thought was a good idea. Maybe we could use a paint sprayer. That's not what we do. We make it for the intended use and it's going to be super robust um, and do the job that it's designed to do exactly the CDC standards. Uh, we did check our large unit yesterday. I'm sure there'll be some questions about electrostatic drives on these units. We are doing some, some testing of competitive product right now around that. 
we tested our larger unit where we run long hoses. So on our main system, we can run up to 150 feet of hoses on two ports. So you can literally go 300 feet horizontally with that piece of equipment running through the hose, no drop in pressure. Um, the, the process of moving the liquid through the hoses actually winds up giving us a small electrostatic charge at the tip. We do, we do not feel in our business that electrostatic has the, um, has all of the, the characteristics that, that it's being claimed to have. There's a lot of misinfor disinformation out on the market right now. Some people actually think that electro electrostatic sprayers, that it's the electrostatic charge that kills the bacteria and viruses. It could not be farther from the truth. So electrostatic is, not, is, is designed to do nothing more than make a better delivery system for the chemical to the surface that you're trying to spray. The chemical is the only thing the only thing that kills the infectious disease organisms. And so that needs to be stressed, it needs to be remembered. We, our tip has a vorticular action, so it actually, and this is in the CDC, it actually will wrap, you'll see when you spray it, it wraps spray. That gives you a much better coating of, of material on the surface. But the idea is, even with all of that proper, proper training and applicator, uh, SOP, so the standard operating procedures that the operator follows, is your best defense when using these uh, these delivery mechanisms, like like the germ plotter. You've got, and what I'm saying is to cut it, cut to the chase. You want it to die, shoot it, shoot right at the surface, coat it 100 percent. You are going to kill what's there if you're using the right chemical at the right dilution, and it's and it's got the proper hold time. All that stuff is super important. Uh, all the other gimmicks help but they don't they don't do the job for you uh should i will the system in yeah why don't you do that let's see okay so i covered the history of our company how we started germ fogger i can talk a little bit about the state of the market and what you're seeing as i told you a little bit about that just now um our three systems the original germ, germ fogger and then the backpack and the purse model we're coming out out with uh, some discussions about vorticular and, and electronic, electrostatic. Does anybody have any questions so far? I'd love to, love to be able to entertain questions. Well, Thad, um, I actually had a question that was emailed to me today because I have somebody, um, some people who are tuning in once this goes on demand. And so the question was around kind of the um, flexibility to um, have this machine and use the correct chemical for your correct location. And mm -hmm. so um, they use the example of this what came from a restaurant. They use the example of that they have a very fancy dancy high end um, dish service machine. Um, the, pro the problem with that is that unless they use the cleaner that comes with that company, it voids the warranty. So what they were checking was that if they are looking at using a chemical that um, works to disinfect in their environment, that it kind of, you hit upon that, it doesn't, you guys don't have a, you have to use X cleaner. Right, 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 okay. So I understand the question. Um, so our system is a multi-agent system. We don't, we do not sell a chemical. Uh, we don't care what chemical goes through it as long as it's again, not flammable. I mean, that's for safety precautions. Obviously if you, if, uh, isopropyl alcohol is a great agent for killing just about anything, uh, up above 75 or 80% purity. Well, that's also about the point at which it becomes highly flammable. So you're literally putting a plume of, <laughs> of vapor into the air. You can imagine what happens, even an electronic spark has a potential to blow that up. So anything is flammable, no. But that leaves an enormous number of chemicals out there available to you to use. CDC has a, a pretty exhaustive list on their website. Some of them are food grade contact. Uh, Simple Green has a, has a product that's actually food grade qualified. There are hydrogen peroxide based, acid based, uh, quat based, 
We work with chemical manufacturers. If there's ever a question about whether something is, is applicable to our system, we're more than happy to help, help work through that. We can, we, we, um, we can suggest chemicals, but again, we're not in the chemical business and we're not binding you to use any single thing. You can use one chemical today, clean the system out and use another chemical tomorrow. It's, and another one the third day. So different applications, whatever you feel like you wanna do, you've got complete flexibility. Thank you. I know that was um, for EarthWise members. Um, we try and use as many third party certified green cleaners as possible. There are some on the EPA and CDC website that do um, R rated for uh, COVID, SARS, things like that. Um, but people I think were just kind of looking at, um, and we actually did have that conversation about making sure um, you were looking at flashpoints and uh, yeah, fire yeah. ratings for whatever whatever um, you're sanitizing with. So, thank you. Yeah, and, and it, you know, this all also goes back just real quickly to that conversation about that I started with the electrostatic application is really important. Some of your green products, as as you know, they can be slightly less effective and a little bit take a little bit more time to do the job that they're supposed to do. So that that period of time that's the hold time may be slightly increased. Instead of, for instance, doing a single pass with our wand, you may have to do a double pass to able to, to allow the, the chemical to stay wetted on the surface long enough to get your kill, the kill that you want. And super easy to do. I mean, it's all about the application again, easily managed. Um, you're still gonna have a really thin film on there. You know, you need to think also about things like are you working in an environment where you've got a lot of HVAC running? Is the air conditioner or the heat going? Because those things will affect that hold time also. So you need, the applicator needs to adjust to the, the conditions in the office or the, in the whatever, in the classroom or whatever space they may be working in so that they're actually using the equipment properly. And that's really what we're after is trying to get people to use a super high quality, super robust piece of equipment properly. And what the, it really, I mean, it, it upsets me to listen to some of the stuff that I hear where people actually think that like electrostatic is, it's, it's not a ray gun. <laughs> That's not how it works. The chemical does the job and you've got to apply the chemicals properly. Thank you. Yeah. I have a question. Please. Um, I, actually, I haven't seen a demonstration, so I don't know how this no, all sir. works, but I'm wondering oh. how, it, you say it goes on a surface. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't get underneath a surface where, where, where people may touch, but also how does it, how does it affect fabric, also artwork, um, you know, putting a, a product, I mean, you know, if it's in the air and it gets on artwork or it gets on, you know, how do you clean fabric? Um, so those are a couple of questions that I have about it, cause, but I haven't seen a demonstration, yeah. so I well, don't know. I'll answer that and then we'll do the demonstration uh, right afterwards. So that may generate some more questions, but real quickly, again, the chemical is the, is the key to your fabric. All right. Uh, I would say probably stay away from the hydrogen peroxide based chemicals, for instance, because they can have a bleaching effect. So you want to be aware of that when you use them. Um, there are a lot of chemicals out there. There are others that won't have any effect on you. There's some that are, that are actually probably even suggested to be used in on fabric. So what about the fabric, you know, the uh, products? We have a lot of the, you know, um, organic stuff. I don't Cotton. know. Huh? Cotton, that kind of thing. No, no, I mean the products. We use all the, I, I can't think of the word right now. but Yeah, yeah the green, green products. Right. I, I think it's important to talk to the manufacturer and read their labels and understand because, again, we don't, we don't, we don't sell chemicals, we sell the delivery system. And so um, you can use anything you want. And I know there are products out there that do frankly almost anything you wanna do. There are some, there's a, a really incredible chem chemicals out there that are available. And so if you know what you're spraying on, you can go designer and you can put whatever you want through our machine and it's gonna, it's, the machine's gonna deliver it exactly the way it needs to be delivered to do the job. Mm -hmm. but again, back to the chemical manufacturers. If you need help with that, we're certainly willing to assist as well. Okay. 
And Bonnie, I know, I know Thad and the team at Germfogger can help with that too. Um, for folks um, connected with us through Earthwise and through this, um, we do have, you know, relationships with different janitorial companies. We can most certainly, um, third non-toxic uh, cleaners, I can talk today. We can most certainly um, also help you guys um, make sure that if there's a product that you're wanting to use through any kind of sanitation system, um, that it's the right one for your use. Um, we can definitely connect people if there's something specific, like you said, artwork or lots of fabrics, um, connect with the people that do that um, all day. So we make sure that you have the right kind of cleaning agent. Um, also, I'll be sending it out. Uh, Mark is, we're looking for a place to do it, but Mark is going to come down to Salem next week and actually do a live demonstration if people are interested because then you can after the demonstration people can you know touch surfaces look at the machine so um once we have where that's going to be located and we'll be doing it in a small group so everyone can be socially distanced and we'll have our masks um people are more than welcome to come do a live demonstration of the product too. And so once we have that, I'll be sending it out to all of you that signed up on the webinar if you have an interest to come. See yeah, and you're welcome. everybody get a chance, you can actually use the machine if you come to that. I might suggest Kate Brown's office with the news would be good. I'm just <laughs> <laughs> um, Real quickly on the art, you know, if you've got paintings on the wall that are framed, you can use a germ fogger on those framed paintings, no problem. Uh, hopefully most people aren't putting their hands all over artwork and so they're probably a low, I would call them, you know, they're a very low touch surface so not a, not a surface that's going to um, pass the disease or diseases on easily. But if you're going to, if you're going to put it on brass or bronze or, you know, any kind of substrate that might get damaged by it, again, you're going to have to go back to the chemical manufacturer and figure out what the best thing to do is at that I, point. I was, most cleaners I, will be. I was thinking more of uh, you spray it and it's in the air and it just sort of gets oh, all yeah. the paintings yeah. with, you know, with not yeah. sort of peripheral. Very, very low. I think you, you're going to see in this demo, you know, you, it, it, where you shoot it, it goes. And so uh, it's not going to wind up. It doesn't, it, we call that friable. It doesn't wind up in the air very much. Uh, it kind of goes where you shoot it. And uh, with that, I'm going to turn this over to Mark and Anthony's going to re reposition our our screen here so you can see the demo. All righty, I'm going to go ahead and switch screens here and uh, take it to Mark for the demonstration. This is the germ fogger unit. So I don't know if any of you have seen it before, but um, it's all over our website and stuff if you go there. Um, for, uh, like we said, all metal construction. Here's the wand that Fab talked about. Oops, we used earlier. Um, and the two ports to make a two-man operation. It has a removable stainless steel tank that you hold the disinfectant in. And what you do is you, uh, most disinfectants like that said are diluted in water. You would fill it with the uh, water and then pour in the disinfectant. Sorry, I don't have that with me right now, but this is a demo. Probably will when I come down there next week. Um, and then what we usually use is a cordless drill with a paddle wand just to mix it up, but you can shake it up and everything. It is a pressurized system, that's what this is, which is nice because when it's in effect, it is hermetically sealed. So it's a big unit, it would never fall over, but if it did, you wouldn't be spilling chemical or anything. Um, so that, you, you'd have the chemical mixed up in there, you have a port here and a port here, in and out. One provides pressure to drive it out, the other takes the fluid in, then brings it up to a high pressure. It's just a plug-in unit. As you see, I already got it plugged in and everything on off. Here, which for like you can have your hose on. 50 feet of hose is what it comes with right here. It is a uh, chemical rated and high pressure rated. Um, pretty simple operation. Just uh, plug it in here and plug in your wand here. I'll go ahead and turn it on now and you'll hear a couple, you'll hear some different sounds and I'll explain what you're hearing as it goes along. 
When I turn it on, the first thing you're going to hear is a compressor. You can hear that, and then you'll hear some hissing after that. The hissing is because the compressor is a pump. There you can hear the hissing. That's because it's a constant run compressor. It's not a cycle compressor. That way the compressor lasts longer. So what it does, it comes up to about 30 PSI, filling the tank up um, with air to pressurize it out. And then at the 30 PSI, it just hits it through. There, it also does a second thing where it operates a pneumatic, uh, uh, hydraulic pneumatic pump that you'll hear when I open the valve. So you can hear that up to this pump that's bringing the liquid up to that 150 PSI we need to get the uh, 35 micron droplet size when it goes to our, our tips here. Just kind of wait for that to uh, stop moving, and then pretty much you're all ready to go. We've got some rattling on here. Um, and I'll show you the application. All you do to spray is just that. That simple. And so I'll come over here. This would be a typical application. So we have our conference room here. It's, it's okay for electronics, so I've got some electronics on there. And that's it. And if you'll see, you can see you get the 100% coverage. I went a little heavy on that side, but just to show you, it's 100% coverage. I did one little section. Get it in a matter of seconds. The whole table would have would have took me a couple more seconds and stuff. It's that quick. And then you let it sit there and dry. Um, a couple things I'll talk about is the fact that we have the multiple tips. I'll go ahead and turn it off. Pretty simple demo. We sell it with multiple tips, and the reason we do that is not so much that the tips need to you know go bad or anything. Is that to get that 35 micron droplet size? We have to, we do the high pressure through a very small orifice in the tip. And not so much the chemical, but the carrier, the water, if you have hard water, it can clog the tips over time. And we don't want any downtime. So if you're out there spraying all day long, it starts to slow down. All you have to do is in the field, is just pop one tip off, put another on, and you're good to go. At the end of the day, you can either soak them in vinegar, or you can um, take a wrench, you take them apart, this part comes off, and then you clean it with a needle and a Q-tip swab, and you're good to go. Um, it is a pressurized tank. If you want to uh, you know, add fluid or anything like that, you just release the pressure, and you're good to go. Here is a port for the two-man operation. So this unit, like I said, is one of the only ones where you can have it. Like in a school application, you might have two people running it, it coming down the hallway, and it's one person going on one side, one person going on the other side cleaning rooms. We have a school in Avondale that's doing that with their buses. They'll do two buses at a time. They bought extra length of hose so they can go all the way to the back of the bus, come forward and sanitize it. Prior to this machine, they were uh, disinfecting their buses with a spray bottle. So going in there, spraying it, wiping it down, would take them three hours to do a bus. With this machine, they do it in 11 minutes. I'm showing it with a 50 feet of hose. We do sell, it comes with a 50 foot of hose. You can get an extra 100 feet or you can get uh, a 50 and another 100 and a two man operation uh, unit. The unit as you see it, uh, for you guys, cause you're in Salem, uh, there'd be no delivery costs. It's uh, $5,950. Um, if you wanna make it a two man operation, you get an extra 50 feet of hose, you get an extra applicator wand and an extra three tips. And that's only 499. Um, the other thing I wanted to show is it does have heavy duty casters, easy to roll around. They are lockable if you want it to stay in position. How much the price on the smaller unit? Uh, in the smaller backpack unit, uh, that's going for uh, $1,850, $1, $1,850. And under a thousand bucks for the purse. And under a thousand dollars for the purse. Uh, the backpack unit will be available uh, September, in the end of September timeframe. Uh, I guess I'll open it up to any questions. Yeah, switch back over. Yep. So I'm gonna switch back over to the face screen. Do we have a ride share person on this call? 
Okay. Um, I think we're going to be uh, not ride share, but I think uh, Chariots will be watching the videos. Okay. 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 Uh, Rachel, you're on mute. Oh, okay. Now I'm off. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I think this will be really great when you come down, Mark, so people, um, if they have an interest, they can actually, you know, fuel unit, turn it on, spray it. Yeah, um, and hopefully it'll be in a big area because it goes really quick. <laughs> I, I was thinking um, we we'll, might be looking at it on the Public Works campus going into one of the bays. So we have a lot of space. We have a lot of space to distance. Distance, is it? Um, I, I kind of wanted to, if you guys, definitely because, you know, from where I come, the sustainability piece of um, what we look at doing and kind of, as you guys were saying that, um, you know, there are no plastic parts in here. There are uh, no parts that might um, fall apart easier with lots of application. Um, can you kind of give us a little bit of talk about really um, the sustainability of having a unit that's primarily um, metal with no plastic, except obviously for the hose, which is chemical rated? Yeah, I would say, you know, one thing I'll, I'll tell you, all the other systems are imported from China that we know of, all right? Um, they're, I hesitate to use the word cheap because it's a, doesn't really have a lot of meaning behind it, but they're not, they're not a quality built piece of equipment. We have heard from distributors, and I won't name the name of the, the system, uh, who have carried other units uh, that have up to 60% of them have failed in the field within a year. They're, again, plastic. You know where those wind up? They wind up in the landfill. Shipped from Asia, wind up in our landfill. This is sort of, that's, well, as you know, with what you do, that's the supply chain that we've set up. Ship it from Asia, throw it in our landfills. Uh, we, our stuff is super robust. I mean, all that's, we compete with, with Asian imports in the brewery business, and we survived in the face of much, much less expensive competition. Because in a market like today, for instance, this is a little bit off topic, but in a market like today where, um, where you have a lot of used equipment, the Asian equipment that's hitting the market's being sold for 15 to 20 cents on the dollar. Our equipment's selling for 85 cents on the dollar. The brewing that's, equipment. Yeah, the brewing equipment. That's the difference in quality versus not having quality. Uh, the, that same, and the reason I tell that story is the, the principles that we use in that business are exactly the same principles that we use in anything that we design and develop and manufacture here. We literally, on the other side of this wall is our electrical room. On the other side of the wall of that, there's there's 30,000 square feet of product being produced uh, with welders and fabricators right now, including the germ fogger equipment. And go back to that, welders and fabricators. So the germ fogger is welded components as you see that hood over it. Um, it's like I said, all metal construction. You can see that in the wand. It's not a plastic wand. The whole thing I was touching in spraying is all metal. It's made to work 24-7. It's made to work all day long, and every day uh, of a week, and keep going. Yeah, that compressor, just the compressor itself, which is the one unit that runs the hardest in the entire piece of equipment, has a runtime uh, at high pressure of 3,000 hours before you need to put new seals in it. We're only running it at 20, that's at 100 PSI. We're running it at 25 PSI. So when I spoke with our compressor manufacturer and asked them, you know, well, how long can we expect to run it before we need to do any maintenance to it? He said, I don't have any idea. No one runs it at 25 PSI. It's too low. Great. I love to hear that. That thing may go for six, seven. We don't know. We're going to find out someday. Someone's going to call us and tell us that their compressor seals are burned out, but it's not going to be this year, nor next year, nor probably the year after that. Uh, and then we'll get a call and then we'll know. Um, but that's the kind of robust equipment that we... It's over-engineered. Yeah. Um, the fact that we're two-man operations. So you saw me work at one-man operation, 50 feet of hose. We've tested it, two-man operation, total of 300 feet of hose, and there's no difference in it coming out of the wand. So I'm sure we can go for, uh, you know, longer hose if we wanted to, but it is over-engineered so we can get those. Yeah, and, you know, speaking from, again, from a standpoint of environmentalism and, 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 and being cautious of, of building a green product, Instead of building two machines, we built one that runs two hoses. Uh, that's a unique concept in the market. It was unique, especially when we came out with it. I've seen some other 
products come out with two person operations now. We, I don't know how they work and they're imported. I have no idea how they work. My guess is probably not like ours. Um, what else can we say on that? I mean, it's, you know, our product yeah, is We source. see the casters yeah. and everything. I mean, just, we, we didn't go cheap on any of it. It's metal casters yeah. with the uh, low skid resistant tire wheels. I mean, just, you know, every, every component in it is, you know, uh, high quality uh, sourced from in America, if we can get it um, made to last. Yeah, I mean, uh, the major componentry in this system comes from um, California, Cincinnati. Uh, I would bet that most of our aluminum is U.S. made. Well, I don't know where, what mill it would come from, but you're looking at it pretty much an American-made machine. And then, it all, of course, all assembled and welded here in Portland. And anyone on this uh, webinar is definitely welcome for a, uh, a tour of our shop, both Jerem Fogger and Portland Kettle Works. Mm -hmm. Um, really quick, because I, I kind of had, these are, this is kind of some of the general questions I have, and you guys touched on it a little bit, you know, obviously for folks when they're looking at a product and looking at ROI, um, one of the places that I think people were most interested in um, any kind of sanitation system is the ROI on manpower and um, as opposed to physically having to wipe down things um, with a spray bottle or, you know, I have some people that are buckets and rags right now, um, kind of the ROA on manpower. And then, um, Mark, I think you and I, when we first started talking about this, and it may be something we send out in email, but um, I do know that um, people who have had COVID outbreaks um, here in Marion County who have had to close and bring in like a professional cleaning uh, company because they don't have an in-house sanitation system were telling me that it was about a dollar sixteen a square foot to have them come in and do that. I know backpack sprayers, some of the more traditional ones are about 76 cents per square foot and I know you had one and it was it was a lower than that but for the life of me I I can't remember that ROI and um, working from home that sticky note is somehow eluding oh, me uh, in my um, board of sticky notes so I wondered if you could really quick um, kind of just talk about that ROI on you know human time yeah. um, spent and maybe if you remember that as we were talking about the ROI the price per square foot. Um, and we're working with a couple of different people, but on the low end, we have a unit in Detroit. It's ISS, they're the largest janitorial service in the nation. They uh, got the contract with Detroit. They do the airport there. They got one of our units. Um, they're, because they've got the contract, because it's such a big area, they're at the low end charging uh, 17 cents a square foot. Now, service masters, service pros currently in this area, um, are getting anywhere from 30 to 50 cents a square foot. You know, we can do, if there's nothing in the way and everything, we can do over 50,000 square feet in an hour. We do about 10,000 square feet as a, as a gallon of disinfectant. So if you translate those numbers, it becomes very cost effective. I think you get those higher prices when there's a COVID outbreak. Of course, they're gonna come in there with full hazmat. Um, like uh, Thad uh, talked about earlier, we just recommend that you follow the manufacturer or the uh, chemical for PPE for dilution ratio and for hold time. Yeah. And there's, there is a difference between having an outbreak and doing high touch surfaces, preventative versus outbreak. Okay. And the idea, obviously, look, when you have an outbreak, all, all bets are off. You're going to spend a lot of money. It's going to be a painful experience. People aren't going to come to work the whole nine yards. So you got quarantining going on. The idea is to prevent that from happening. So social distancing, uh, wearing masks, sanitation, those are like the three main areas that you're going to be able to have an effect on, on that conversation. And uh, that's, you know, for general maintenance, this unit can be run by somebody which got to train them for 35, 45 minutes and let them know how the machine runs and tune it to their chemical and you're off to the races then. And they can do it every day, day in and they day out. They do it day in, day out. That's... I mean, the story about teachers at disinfecting with five minutes between classes, that's perfect environment for that piece of equipment that we're putting together to, do, to tackle that problem. 
And then back to the ROI, I think I already gave the numbers, but I go back to the guy, my guy in Avondale, in Michigan, the school, he does the buses. So wipe down a bus with a spray bottle in a rag, three hours, the, the unit, 11 minutes. Thank you. Any questions from our listening audience? <laughs> All right. So um, if there's no questions, what I'm going to leave you guys with is um, I'm going to share my screen real quick, get that back up for everybody. I have a question. Go ahead. Um, I'm, I'm a question about the backpack unit and is, is the, the spray wand the same as on the big unit? Yes. Yes, the same. So what you saw will be on the backpack unit. It'll have a five foot hose going to the backpack itself. Yeah, and the okay. same thing with, the, with the, the shoulder strap unit, it's always gonna be the same applicator. So I'm just assuming that the, the, the container with the product is gonna be smaller. Much smaller. Much smaller. Uh, generally, it's gonna be a soft, a pliable rubber bag. So it's inert, chemical, whatever chemical you put in it should not have any effect on the rubber. Um, again, specially made for us in Northern California. So I, you know, I will, there's one thing we didn't talk about our warranty on the system. So when you turn, when you turn in a warranty card on one of these, we give a three year warranty on the chassis and a one year warranty on all the mechanical componentry. I don't think anybody in the industry has anything that even comes close to comparing to that. What about, um, a mask? Is there any aerosol that well, then you would get it into your face or on your... In I highly advise using, using personal protective equipment. If you have not had, had a COVID outbreak, generally speaking, this is the way the contractors have explained it to me. If you haven't had a COVID outbreak, uh, then a mask is generally the proper protocol. If you have had a COVID outbreak, that's when they come in with the white suits and they're completely you know, taped up and everything so that the people that come in don't get sick until the office. <laughs> And for the demonstration, I wasn't wearing a mask, but it's primarily water that's in there for the demonstration. And back to what we always talk about is you definitely follow the PPE that the uh, chemical manufacturer recommends. Um, and some, most of them is, are just a mask and maybe some goggles. All right. Thank you. So yes, um, as soon as I have where and uh, I think we have the day for Mark um, scheduled to come out to Salem, um, we will give people the place and um, people can come in and do a live demonstration with that. Also, you know, um, I have the website for Germ Fogger up here. I can most certainly share Mark's email with folks if you guys would like a to have like a demo in your space to see how something fits um, for what you do and not in a general area. I'm quite sure you could arrange that with Mark. Um, I really appreciate all of you um, and Earthwise and the businesses connecting with me about these kind of questions. Um, there's just a lot out there that we're all trying to navigate and make sure that our customers and our stakeholders and our employees and you know our maintenance crews that everyone is being safe and well and while this is definitely today we're talking about more things like COVID and flus um, you know I think we are moving into that world where we're looking at how do we do bigger cleaning systems and bigger disinfecting systems um, that save us um, some time save us maybe not having to put as many parts into a landfill or incineration um, and being able to have a little more freedom um, for our business to choose the type of uh, cleaning or antimicrobial agent that fits what we do or sometimes maybe fits our, our budget if you're needing to be with a janitorial company and buying bulk. Um, this, you know, having that freedom to really have um, whatever chemicals or uh, green cleaners in your building that you choose. So I wanted to thank everybody for joining us today and Thad and Anthony and Mark 
Um, thank you for coming in and talking to us about this. I think this is um, a new place of conversation for the Earthwise Network. Um, we talk about people and planet and profit, and we talk about, we're starting to talk about people a lot and how we keep um, the people in our work and community safe is a, a bigger discussion for us now. So um, thank you all for joining us. Um, this should be available. I do run it through YouTube. So our closed captions um, come through. I will let everyone know when the link is out for an on-demand uh, viewing of this, but it should be Thursday night or Friday morning. And again, thank you all so much for joining us. Um, I'll, before I drop in, I wanna make sure I got everybody if they had any questions. Um, if not, we will roll along. Uh, Rachel, I did wanna let you know, definitely give people my email, also give them my phone number. They can call me direct. Will do. Melissa, did you have something? I saw you jump. <laughs> Can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay. Um, you had mentioned, here I'm getting feedback. You had mentioned that uh, uh, if a place has been quarantined, they have to come in all gowned up. Um, is this something that our staff and our AICs can be trained on or do we need to have somebody come in and do okay. the sanitation part? So if you guys have protocols in place um, for outbreaks and cleaning, so if you, you could actually have AICs um, go into the, PP, the PPE equipment. So they could have the, you could purchase the face mask and if it's an outbreak um, for the cleaning, you know, I think with the chemicals and cleaners you guys use, it would be like them doing um, a regular deep cleaning of a dorm. So they'd have their gloves. They'd probably have the N9 uh, mask on and uh, some kind of safety or protective goggle. Um, but definitely if this is something that you have um, a protocol in place for a deep cleaning due to an outbreak, um, there's nothing really saying that you have to have hire an outside company, but um, your safety protocols should show that um, if you're cleaning because of a, a known outbreak that you want to go into the full PPE with the, the, the booties and the jump set and the closed um, face system. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Well, thank you guys so much and I will be sharing some information out. Um, for those on the call, you'll probably be seeing it um, tomorrow morning. And then, like I said, Thursday night, Friday, it will be in our YouTube playlist on virtual events. Thank you, Rachel. And I look forward to doing the demo next week. Thanks, Rachel. All right. Thank, Thank you, Rachel. All. Thank you, Rachel. You know what day next week? Um, Wednesday. Wednesday, yes. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you guys so much.